the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Morning, guys, and welcome to episode 184 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Beckson. Today, we're going to be talking with Anna Brenners Taylor here, relocation and relocate specialist here, actually, here in our office here at Costa Rica Investments. Uh, I thought it good to kind of get a bit of information out there, as I know quite a few people are contacting us about moving. Um, full time or partially throughout the year with them or even their families down here in Costa Rica. Um, so just wanted to get kind of like, you know, FAQ questions from her um, and just get an update on kind of what's happening in the relocation world here as well. So we'll get straight into that. Remember, if you need anything from us, uh, you can contact us info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. We've got some interesting projects, mainly on one in Manuel Antonio, but we have different investments all over the country. Uh, so if you're looking to do anything here in Costa Rica, uh, we kind of act as buyers, reps, owners, reps, and just kind of consultants and investments here, uh, as we've done quite a few things here from hotels to developments, guiding hospitality, uh, building homes, uh, building multifamily units, building commercial. We've done quite a few different things here. So you can email us info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. But let's get straight into the podcast. Good morning, Anna. How are you doing? Good morning, Richard. Thank you for having me. I'm not doing worry. wonderful. It's again, it's always a little weird to have someone that I work with come on the podcast, but I think it's just important to get information out there. And, you know, especially as you're in the relocation world, a lot of people are, you know, with the uh, craziness happening in the world, a lot of people are looking to Costa Rica because it's kind of a mecca of just, uh, you know, relaxation and political calmness. So, um, but the, the question I always like to ask is just, you know, markets had a good comeback in 2023, real estate in North America has either kind of flatlined or declined. I mean, how is your 2024 looking and what do you think the rest of the year is going to look like? Well, I'm actually uh, seeing a lot of movements. Uh, there's a lot of uh, momentum in the area of Playa del Coco, Playa Hermosa. Yep. Uh, just amazing, I think, opportunities coming up there. Uh, with the Waldorf Astoria being built and the Ritz, you know, it's just there's there's a new because because El Coco has been moving slowly, I think, for the last few no. years, and now all of a sudden it's just really starting to pick up. So it's exciting. Um, there are still very good deals in the area, and so we've been looking at properties with clients in that area. I think again the South Pacific, you know, coastal area, Dominical, Ubita, Ojuchal is very exciting as well. It's just continues to have a lot of momentum. You know, the, the marina in, in Golfito is coming. Yeah. So now I think what I've been seeing lately is also that the area after, you know, a little bit uh, south of, from Ojochal is really picking up. Yep. Like the Rios, San Buenas, you know, it's just a lot of great deals. Um, and people are like looking a little bit, you know, yeah. further down the line and seeing all the amazing opportunities coming that to the, to that area. So very exciting. I think the the market has also is also allowing, you know, for if even you know either the prices are dropping a little bit or there's just a, just an opportunity to negotiate a little more. You know. Yeah. So it's an exciting time and a good time to to go and look at, at properties. I agree. I agree. What I mean, we're going to focus our, our, our talk here on relocating just because I think a lot of people are looking to do that. But I mean, what are the common misconceptions, um, you know, that people have about relocating to Costa Rica? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, if you start, if you if you visit the Facebook groups, you know, talking about relocation, uh, you know, it, it, it can be a little scary. So I think that, first of all, yes, you need some guidance, you know, and that's kind of why we exist, right? It's good to be able to have someone that can give you the context. Uh, but I think that it's not as, as difficult as people think. I think it is that because we have been getting so many people in the last five years, especially, I think that, that the areas have really, um, you know, the banks, the schools, uh, just the activities, the, the pickleball, the paddle, Fields. I mean, it's just there's a lot of great things happening to try to accommodate now the new families uh, that are living in the coastal areas and also in the mountain areas. So 
I think that it's not as difficult and as uh, challenging as people think it is. Yeah. So yeah, just want to throw that out there. Easy for us to say, of course, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, again, when you've got a guide, it's usually a little bit easier. If you're trying to do it yourself, I think it can get, can, it can be a little, right. uh, yeah. I mean, what are the main areas? I mean, you mentioned some there, but I mean, what are the main areas that people are looking to relocate, not buy real estate, but like looking to live? Yeah. Well, I think uh, I have to say first, Northern Pacific, you know, coastal area. I think that everything that is all the areas around surrounding Tamarindo uh, are are very interesting for families um, and also the younger retirees because there's just everything, you know, you find hospitals and clinics and schools, a variety of schools. Um, you, you have an amazing amount of restaurants and bars and um, just a, a lot of fun activities that you get to do, classes of, you know, Spanish and I mean, the surfing, you name it, right? And and I think that being close to an area that has such offering is is very beneficial, but at the same time, you don't necessarily need to be inside of Tamarindo. I think inside in the middle of Tamarindo, uh, it's a party town. So of course there's a lot going on. Yeah. But the, the surrounding areas, so for me, Playa Grande is huge. Um, I think even Villarreal, um, which is just 10 minute, a 10 minute drive to, to Tamarindo is, is really picking up. And I uh, personally love the area, the area of Potrero and Flamingo and Brasilito. I think that this area is, it continues to be, to do so well because it's so close to many different little beaches. You're still close enough to Tamarindo. Um, very exciting. I think there's a lot, you know, a, a lot of great, exciting projects coming to the area as well. What about areas but like Samara, have... Samara? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Samara and Carrillo, I think it will have a boom uh, in in the next five years. Um, it's just a low, Samara is a low key town, uh, but it's beautiful. People are great, amazing restaurants, um, great schools. And so, yeah, this, this area is coming up. I, um, I especially love uh, the area of, I think, Nosara is is developing beautifully, uh, especially Playa Garza. Remember that there's an area in Playa Garza that is about is, is about to be developed. Um, and it's an area where, where, you know, you don't have to pay $2 million for a property. Yeah. So I think that there are many new opportunities coming up um, that will, you know, allow other budgets to also accommodate in the area. Amazing investment opportunity, of course, because this is a very sought after um, area. Yeah, but I think South Pacific, Richard, very exciting. I mean, I think it's just very different. You know, that Southern Pacific is more right. jungle. It's a little, I don't know the word is hippie is the right word, but it's just a little bit more with people that are in a little bit more touch with nature, um, yeah. you know, self-aware, very yogury. Um, but not, you know, I mean, you've got that in kind of the Nosada area and you've even got it in Grande. It's just a little bit more conservative, those areas. Whereas I think the Southern zone is a very liberal area I would use if I'm even able to use those words. But, yeah. um, and once you go there, you know, very quickly, I mean, you know, in talking to someone, I can tell within two seconds, you know, where probably the best area in Costa Rica is for them. Right. Well, for me, I think Dominical is surf and yoga and wellness kind yeah. of hippie-ish. Yep. But then as you start going south, I think Uvita uh, is a little bit less. It has that, but it's a little bit more business and like beautiful homes and like really, you know, it, it sort of evolved into into less hippie, yep. you know, but still has, you know, that keeps that great environment. But then Ojo Chal, I think as you go south, I think it's, you know, more family oriented, you know, it's less hippie. So the southern, the 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 more south you get from Dominical, I think it's been toning down a little bit. Yeah. It continues to keep that character of yoga, wellness, surfing, but in a in a more, I think Ojo Chal is more residential. A lot of people live there. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a beautiful community and I think it's classy, you know, great restaurants and I don't know. It's just, I love it. Awesome. Should people buy or should they rent when looking to relocate to Costa Rica, in your opinion? 
I think it depends if you've, you've never been here before or you don't know Costa Rica that well, I think it's, and you're not sure of the area, then I think it's good to rent first. Yeah. You know, we have some clients now uh, that have been traveling around the country because they did come to the South Pacific coastal area first and they fell in love, but they, we, we suggested to them, let's just, if you have the time and you, your work allows you to work, you know, like a digital nomad, then maybe spend some time. So they've been spending time all over Costa Rica in the last three months and they got back to the Southern Pacific and said, yeah, this is it. This is yeah. where we want to be. But I'm still showing them areas within the South Pacific that they haven't really seen. Yep. You know, they fell in love with a very specific Platanillo area. And so now I'm like, I'm showing them uh, other areas and they're like shocked. Wow, wait, we've been driving around everywhere, but we didn't get to see this. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a it's a beautiful process. But for people who have been here and know the areas that they like, then it's it's um it's easier to say, okay, maybe maybe I'm ready to buy land or uh ready to buy, you know, if I bump into a great opportunity, then you know, I'm ready to buy because now they know they understand what the reality of Costa Rica is. They have spent enough time here. So it very much depends on on the family, but yes. Okay. How do people manage healthcare in Costa Rica? I mean, that's a big thing, especially, you know, with depending on the age, but like, how do they manage that? Well, um, you know, the Costa Rica social security system has, you know, state hospitals that are absolutely amazing. Um, and, and the, the, you know, the system has small, so they have clinics, let's say in the, the bigger towns in a community. And then they have little advice, which is a mini clinic that is divided into, you know, every neighborhood, let's say. So the communities are divided that way. So, um, yeah, most most Costa Ricans and some of the expats just use the service, you know, for any any need that they might have medical need. Most of the Ticos, what we what we do, let's say Ticos that are middle class and up, what we do is we. We usually go to a private doctor, which is actually affordable in this country. It is it is something that is you're able to pay for, you know, maybe between fifty and eighty dollars uh, and for an appointment at a doc, a private doctor, um, and for little things. If we have a big surgery, if we have you know chronic illness or let's say cancer treatment, then yes, you would go to a hospital, you know, to a state hospital and yeah. get covered. So basically. Every every one of us that is employed, we get you know we get the right to be, um, you know, insured by by the the health system in Costa Rica. The employer pays an, a percentage, and the employee pays another percentage. Yeah, so that's kind of how it works. You only have access to CAHA if you're a resident here in Costa Rica. If you're not a resident, what are the options available to you? Well, there are many international. Uh, you know, insurance companies operating in the country. Yeah, like Blue uh, so it's very Blue, Pan American. Yeah, right. So you can just buy a private a private uh, insurance that will cover, um, you know, the the some percentage of 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 the cost, and yeah, it's it's private hospitals. It works really well, and I also think that um, you know, once you you decide to start your residency process if you decide to do so um yes you do have to join you know the 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 Costa Rican medical system um and it is based on your um your income your income yes yeah. well and but, again, but, a lot of the time they don't know the income so you can just say it's a thousand bucks if you want to so right yeah. right uh, yeah it doesn't have to be that high I used to think Richard and I just kind of been going through this with my clients, it was going to be like a thousand dollars a month just because, you know, it was hard to figure out what the amount of the income was. And then I realized that, you know, you don't, what you have to do is just make sure that the money that you move in an account here is not that high. Yeah. And that's what they're going to base their calculations on. So now I'm getting, yeah. you know, great price, like 200, $300 a month. Um, yeah. health insurance for clients yeah do people need to get residency to live in costa rica right now? i know the answer they, to that but they don't they don't 
Yeah. Um, you don't have to. You can just, you know, come in with a tourist visa and then exit e either every three months or six months. Now, you know, you you go through immigration and they might they might give you 90 days or 180 days, depending on 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 the person that you you get. <laughs> but uh, so you can just exit and meet it used to be 70, 72 hours. Now you can just exit and come back right back in. Um, and that'll you, extend your you visa. driver's license, Anna, because again, the driver's license only has 90 days validity, but don't you need, you need to be out for 72 hours for your driver's license or not? No. Okay. Don't need to anymore. You, you just, just go, leave, go to Panama, and come, back. come back. Yeah. Like some people just go to Nicaragua, have lunch and come back in. Wow. That's kind of how they do it. Love but it. I also think that if you're a, digi uh, a digital nomad, um, you know, you get a temper, it's, it's like a temporary residency let's say um and yeah it's it's i think it has a validity a validity of one year and then you just renew it yeah uh, it's, it's very easy a lot of people moving here are looking to you know i mean they've not retired you know they still need to work and um, you know their current company they can't work for in costa rica well not legally some people actually vpn in it vpn in mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. if but I mean, what are some of the jobs that are available to people when looking to move here? Well, I, you know, I, for me, if I was an expat, I would just develop a new, a new company, a new service. Uh, I think that there are so many opportunities to just open up, um, you know, a store, a medical, uh, I mean, a, a medical spa, um, you know, a gym, they just opened up a beautiful ocean view gym in Ojochal. Wow. And like the whole community is so excited about it, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's having the vision because there's so many opportunities, so many services that are still needed, that are open, um, that, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of jumping in and, and being brave uh, once you know the community, of course, and yeah. having some help and guidance helps as well. Definitely. I think the food industry is 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 a great opportunity always. Yeah, I know a lot of restaurateurs that earn good money here. So um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's jobs everywhere here. I mean, if you want to go get a job, you can as long as you're a resident. Um, you know, if you're not a resident, um, you know, you can start your own business and work for it as a shareholder. You know, you can't get paid caha, but you know, there are per diems that you can get and uh, expenses, etc. So there's always ways around stuff. But I mean, a lot of people are looking to kind of move down here with kids, you know, they're scared because, you know, the school shootings in the US, the political situation, they just don't want to, you know, the world that they're bringing their kids up in is not the world that they grew up in. And I mean, I don't think that that is ever the case. Here in Costa Rica, you know, we have a very laissez-faire government, you know, education, you know, is bilingual, or, you know, there are American high schools here, there is a British high school, like, you know, there's everything here. But I mean, is it a good country to move to kids in and like how does yes. schooling work? Yes, schooling is amazing. Um, we have so many schools come up to sort of accommodate all the families moving down. So I think that right now they're actually looking into growing a little more because, you know, this we get getting, we keep getting more and more families. But I think you have a lot to choose from and that's, that's what's so cool, right? And also, um, most of the schools, I'm not going to say all of them, but most of the schools are very flexible and, and they accommodate to the reality of a traveling family. You know, people that are here for a few months and then they go back to the U.S. or Canada for a few months. Um, they allow the kids to have sort of a, uh, like a very personalized program and they can do, you know, digital or um, remote uh, studies and sometimes when they're here in the country then they go to the school and I think it's just amazing that they have allowed their institution to open up to all these possibilities yeah I agree. Uh, and that way the kids you know are connected and they are yes they socialize when they're here but they're also connected to the teachers and the studying program yeah that's great Anna who is Costa Rica not for I think Costa Rica is not for for people who want everything black and white. <laughs> Costa Rica is uh, a a very real, uh, beautiful, sometimes raw um, yep. country, you know. And 
you have beautiful, wonderful people that are here. They're very warm. They're very open. But if, but you know, you also have to be come, you, you have to come here and have that attitude and say, okay, I'm going to open up. I'm going to, I want to meet people. I want to join communities and I want to be a part of it. That's how you meet people and you develop a community and friendships that, you know, will last you forever. But it's, it's also the attitude of, of wanting to come and experience the reality and the challenges. And yeah, sometimes it's gotta be too hot, you know, maybe a couple weeks a year, it's like, okay, so then, you know, you just kind of stay in, you choose your day, you you accommodate. I think that it's also just being open and being willing to experience what a, you know, what a Central American, basically new, new world country is you know it's yeah. just that's what we are but it has so many beautiful things if you're only willing to be opening up to it you know i agree well anna i've kept you long enough my last question for you which i love to ask everyone if you inherited five hundred thousand dollars and had to invest it in a business or real estate in costa rica what would you invest it in and why okay so i think i gave you a couple different answers before now i am like definitely i would invest those five hundred thousand in a piece of land Yep. in Southern Pacific area and build either a duplex or four little apartments yep. and rent. Short term Just... or long term? No, short term. Yeah. Why? Yes. Because I think uh, the area is just very dynamic. I think that people just come here to, um, you know, come experience the area and it's better business. Of course, you can make more money if you have short-term rentals. But I also think that I would stay open if I get a really good um, you know, renter that has decided to extend their stay, then accommodate and and you know and and open up to those opportunities. But I think it's, you know, when you want a long-term rental, you want a really good person staying there. So yeah. Awesome. That would be my answer. Good answer. Good answer. I like that one. Anna, well, I really appreciate you coming, taking the time to come on the podcast and answer these uh, these questions. If anyone wants to get in contact with Anna, all of her contact details will be in the description down below. But appreciate you taking the time, Anna. Thank you, Rich, for the opportunity. No worries. Catch you later. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that podcast there with Anna. Um, you know, just kind of going over some basics of relocation. I know a lot of you are looking to make Costa Rica home. Um, again, if you want to chat with her, you can. All of her contact details are in the description or just Anna at investingcostarica.com, A-N-A at investingcostarica.com. You can chat with her about relocation, kind of get her input and she can kind of guide you a little bit there. And if you end up wanting to work with her, you can do. Um, if not, you feel free to pick her brain. So Anna at investingcostarica.com. Um, guys, if you've enjoyed this pod podcast, please give us uh, five stars, thumbs up, pass the pod, share it. Really appreciate the support. Um, I think I've lost count of how many downloads we had. Somebody asked me the other day and I'm like, I don't know. Um, but again, we don't do these for downloads. We do these basically to kind of get information out there, um, put at the forefront, people doing amazing work. And again, if anyone's out there that wants to come and join us on the podcast, that's moved to Costa Rica, has a business here, is starting, is, is looking for help with their business, uh, reach out to us, info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. Thanks very much, guys. Have a great day. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica.